Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. We invite you to stand and worship with us wherever you are and sing along. to worship at Grace United Methodist Church. We're so excited to see all of you here and we're thankful for those worshiping with us at home. I want to introduce myself. I'm one of the pastors here and my name is Jessica. And my name is Drew and I get to be a pastor here too. I add my welcome to Jessica's. If this is your first Sunday with us here in person or worshiping online, we welcome you to Grace and uh, hope that you'll find a blessing here. We want everybody to be able to fill out a connect card and so if you're worshiping online, you can click a link there so that we can get connected with you. If you're here in person, you can use the blue connect card that's in your pew. You can use your phone to scan that code and fill out an online connect card, or you can use the paper connect card if you would prefer. 
and place those in the baskets before you leave today. That's going to be a way for us to learn your name and pray with you. If you need the nursery, it's open. If you need large print worship materials, those are in the back, and one of the ushers can help you with those. Uh, but we hope that you are able to worship with us, and we're glad to be able to do it with you. This is the first Sunday of a new sermon series. This sermon series is called On Your Mark, Stories of Jesus That Help Us Get, Set, and Go. We are uh, getting a lot of new things started uh, in this time of year. Back to school, our own preschool starts back tomorrow. There are other church ministries that are starting up and other ways in which uh, the summer kind of comes to an end and we got to get set to go. And so uh, we are looking to Jesus to be a source of help and hope for all the ways that we've got to get set and go in this season. Again, welcome. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this new day, for this opportunity to worship in this holy place. And God, we ask that you would draw us close, help us to center our scattered senses on the presence of your spirit, so that our hearts would be open to the ways that you would speak to us today, and the ways that we would learn more about your great love for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to stand if you're here with us in person, um, even if you're watching online, to stand as you're able. Um, this is the final Sunday of our hymn singing, where we have been singing the hymns you have selected, and believe it or not, we've gotten to every hymn on the list. Uh, the first one for today is Spirit Song, which is hymn number 347 in the hymnal, and of course the words are on the screen, so join us. Finally, an oldie but goodie, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. This is on page 361.
invite you to remain standing for the reading of Scripture during this sermon series on your mark. All of our readings are coming from the Gospel of Mark. Today's reading comes from the ninth chapter. Listen for the word of the Lord. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he, saw, when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking the child into his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today's message is called Jesus Wants Us to Grow Down. I know, I know, super catchy title, right? Um, or maybe it just catches your attention because it's a little confusing. So I'm going to try to help us out here, try to explain. So today we're highlighting a part of scripture where Jesus reminds us of the importance of little children. In this passage, Jesus tells the disciples to welcome children and even to be like them in Matthew's version. So for all of you grown-ups out there, have you ever heard you yourself saying the words, grow up, to a child in your life, maybe another adult in your life? I may have found myself saying this to my son just last week at eighth grade orientation when he rolled his schedule up into a tight little sword and poked me throughout that morning. Sometimes we tell our kids to grow up when what Jesus said was for us to grow down. Well, not exactly in those words, but to be like children. Um, speaking of children, have I mentioned to you all that I have six of them? Yeah, it's a lot. So here's my family. So my husband, Stephen, and then we have Ben, Brayden, Maddie, Anna, Livy, Gigi, and then myself, of course, there. And I have three children. They're actually the blonde ones, believe it or not. And then my husband has three children. So between the two of us, we are a modern day Brady Bunch, and we love when people call us that. Um, but we're a Brady Bunch with a bit of a twist. So the twist is that my bonus kids, as I call them, they live across the country with their mom in Utah. Um, and my husband has a place out there and spends a lot of time flying back and forth to see everyone. So he usually spends about five to 10 days in Virginia and then five to 10 days in Utah back and forth. It's a bit crazy, but worth it because our amazing little spread out family is awesome. Well, about a week and a half ago, one of our six kids actually did grow up in a big way. Um, our oldest son, Ben, started his first year at the University of Utah. So here's a photo of Stephen and I along with Ben and his stepdad, Josh, moving him into his dorm. Uh, this was our first time moving a kiddo out of the nest and into college, and it was surreal for all of us. Um, in fact, here was the moment where we said goodbye, and Nobody at all cried during that picture. Um, that's not true. Everybody cried. We were a mess. Um, and actually, on that big day, Stephen and I kept commenting on how happy we were for Ben, but how jealous we were, too, to be able to have that experience living with a bunch of peers at a super cool campus, all these amazing amenities, 
and no real responsibility other than going to class, learning as much as you can. Um, and of course, as we kept reminding him, have fun. Have fun. Sounds like a dream life. And it made me wish that I could go back to those carefree days, those carefree college days. There I am moving in my first day at Virginia Tech. Uh, my brother there helping me get settled in at campus. And then in the blink of an eye, bam, moving my bonus son into college. They say time flies, and it is true. It sure does. So my college years were, were an amazing time, sure. They went by way too fast. But when I think about it, it, it really wasn't completely carefree, right? There was stress. There was worry. There was anxiety. So no, if I want to go back um, to some easier, carefree days, I'm going to have to go back further than that. Not high school, certainly not middle school. I've got two of those at home. Those came with their own sets of drama. So no, I'd want to go back even further to when I was a child. Not a care in the world. Oh yeah, that's it. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for right there. That pure innocence, joy, trust, those were the days. I mean, it's hard to even remember them, right? Um, but I can see it when I spend time with the children in my life. And not just my six kids, but also my niece and my nephews as well. These kids just know how to love life. They take pure delight in almost everything. And then sometimes I find myself asking, how do I get back to that? So this bit of nostalgia and wishful thinking brings us back to our scripture lesson. One of several scripture passages in which Jesus highlights and lifts up little children. And in this particular lesson, the disciples are arguing about who among them is going to be the greatest. And Jesus then responds by placing a little child among them. Taking the child in his arms, Jesus says these words, Anyone who wants to be first must be very last and servant of all. Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. These powerful words. Well, this same encounter found in the Gospel of Matthew includes these words from Jesus. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, this would have been a remarkable statement in the historical context. You see, in the first century, Jesus held, um, sorry, children, held little esteem. Virtually no respect was given to children. There were no participation trophies, no schedules that revolved around children's extracurricular activities. Society merely tolerated kids, and the language of Jesus' day actually shows that prejudice. One Greek word for child is pedion, which also means servant and slave. And then another word for child, nepios, was used derogatorily to mean foolish, helpless, unskilled. So there are even places in the Bible that show that prejudice. If you remember Paul's teaching when he admonishes the Christians in Corinth to stop thinking like children. So Jesus telling the disciples to be like little children would have been shocking. So it begs the question, what did he mean? What was Jesus getting at? Why become like little children? I think we would all agree that there are attributes and qualities that children possess possess that are precious. And we tend to lose some of that over time. I think that Jesus wants us to hold on to some of those qualities because it's good for us. And the good news is that with God's saving grace in our lives, we experience these traits for ourselves. So as I was preparing for today, there were five attributes that stood out and that I think are important. And I think that Jesus may have been getting at these qualities are not exhaustive, they're not prescriptive, um, but they are qualities that reflect that life of Jesus, and the children in our lives do an amazing job of modeling them. So first of all, there's this innocence about children that is beautiful. You know what I'm talking about, that pure heart and soul that little ones exude. Too often we believe that that is unattainable at a certain age. But it is attainable, because in God's word, Jesus actually calls us to be as innocent as children and as wise as serpents. 
So it's this fine balance, but one that is possible in and through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is seeing the best in others and striving to be the best version of ourselves. Last week, my daughter Gigi got her first homework assignment, actually the week before at her back to school night. Um, I know, I thought the same thing, homework before school starts, are you serious? Uh, But anyways, we made it through. So she got this big sheet of paper to fill out about superheroes. But the whole idea was that she was the superhero. And she was lifting up her own superhero qualities and then sharing those with the class. And I love this idea. The teacher was encouraging the students to see themselves as amazing, out of this world, proud of their pure hearts. And I wish we could all have the opportunity to see ourselves as superheroes because we truly are. We are the hands and feet of Christ sharing God's love in the world. What is more amazing than that? And check out Gigi's special strengths. She wrote the words kindness, brave, loving, sweetness. Those are the kinds of superhero strengths that we share with the world because God's love and grace in our lives is so powerful. The second quality is joy. Children have such an uninhibited joy that is hard sometimes to come by for us adults. In fact, I read a statistic that children laugh 300 times a day at the age of six, and that number drops to an average of about 15 times for an adult. So if laughter is medicine for the soul, we are not getting enough medicine, my friends. And it makes me think of that moment when children start to be less uninhibited, I remember when Gigi was little, she would dance in front of the church with a group of other children during the opening praise songs. They would jump, and they would dance, and they would sing with abandon. I also remember the day that she stayed in the pew with her big sister, too embarrassed to go up, recognizing that people were watching her and feeling a little insecure. In Scripture, we are invited to rejoice, to live a life full of joy, Check out this photo of my nephew, Riker. He went to pick out his puppy, and there is such pure delight on his face, that uninhibited joy. And if you could hear the infectious laughter that goes along with that great smile, you would not help but laugh as well. You see, joy is contagious, and masks or not, we can certainly catch it from those youngest friends among us. Another quality we can learn from children is a receptivity to learning new things. Kids have this teachability that stems from, I think, vulnerability and also humility. The scripture passage from this morning begins with Jesus predicting his death and the disciples being confused. And it goes on to say that they were afraid to ask questions. This is unlike children who ask lots of questions They know they need help, and they aren't afraid to admit it or ask for it. They have this curious, teachable spirit that craves knowledge and understanding, and they are little sponges soaking it all in. A simple hike outside with my nephews turns into a grand adventure. They are explorers, and they want to catch bugs and find treasures. Check out one of my most memorable hikes with my nephew, Dax. Yep, that's a caterpillar on his head. Every creature, every part of creation is something new to discover, learn about, and be in awe of. It's quite inspiring. And through God's grace, that same curiosity and hunger of knowledge and understanding is alive in us too. So with that thirst of knowledge comes our next childlike quality, trust. Trust in God and faith in all the things we don't understand that we don't see, we can't quite comprehend. In our household, the motto is trust, but verify. Oh, you haven't changed the content settings on your phone? Okay, I trust you, but I'm gonna go ahead and verify that, right? You brush your teeth, trust, but verify. With little children, they just trust. They don't need that extra verification. Uh, My niece, Rowdy, she's almost one and a half. And as I watch her navigate the world, She does not seem to have a care in it. I mean, she cares a lot sometimes, but she walks around in this still figuring out how these legs work, determined strides, 
uh, completely confident that we have her back. When we're swimming, she'll walk around the edge of the pool and go to step right in, not checking to see if I or her mom or someone else is going to catch her, just trusting we've got her. It's going to be OK. That complete trust is hard to have as we get older because people let us down over time. It just happens, inevitably. That childlike trust goes away some. But it doesn't have to be that way with God. Our Lord promises to be with us always, to protect us, to have our back, so to speak. And just like little children, we don't always have control. But kids, just trust us to figure it out, that everything will be okay. It's just in their nature. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could trust God in this way? If we could have this type of faith and trust it's what God wants for us because it brings with it a freedom that lifts burdens and that lessens anxiety. Last but not least, a quality we can learn from children is how to be present. Present in the moment. Present with others. Present with God. My husband and I were recently watching an episode of Ted Lasso. Any Ted Lasso fans in the house? All right. So the scene that stands out to me is one in which two adult characters on the show are talking about children and keeping them amused. And one of them says, most adults think kids need to be constantly entertained. The truth is they just want to feel like they are part of our lives. And it's true. Kids just want to be with us. It often doesn't even matter what we're doing. And I've noticed this quality of presence with my bonus daughters. Uh, when I'm visiting them, it doesn't really matter what we're doing. They just want to be there. Every time I go on a walk in Utah, Anna wants to come with me. We find different trails to explore, and we just walk and talk. And then when we're hanging out at their house, Livy will sit down to me on their backyard swing telling me stories about their chickens and puppies and rabbits. They're so good at just being present with us in the moment. No cell phones, no distractions. They just want to be a part of what's going on. Kids have this amazing gift of presence, not getting distracted by regrets from the past or plans for the future. I found myself doing the opposite of that this week as I walked my daughter, Gigi, to school on her first day. I literally pulled out my phone and started to read to her an email about the after-school program she was going to that day. Then I realized she didn't really care about all of those details. She was pretty good with just knowing, you're going to the after-school program, and then I'll pick you up. Um, I realized that I wasn't being present in this special moment. And I put my phone away, and I held my daughter's hand and told her to have an amazing first day of school and practiced simply being present. And it may sound silly to use the word practice, but for me, it is definitely something I need to practice with intentionality. My life, like so many others, is very busy. So if I don't set that intention and really practice being present, I'm going to miss those special moments. So this past week was back to school week in my house, like it was in many houses the last week or two. Um, and I'm not going to lie, it was a stressful week in a lot of ways. But even so, I witnessed these traits in my children. I saw joy as my son did silly ninja moves around the house to make his sisters laugh the night before school. I saw that purity of heart as my children tried on their first day of school outfits for each other and gave genuine compliments and good vibes to one another. I even learned some new lingo because apparently these days it's not an outfit, it's just a fit. Okay, so now you know, you're welcome. <laughs> I also saw that receptivity to learn new things when I joined my daughter Maddie for her middle school open house and she actually allowed me to help her figure out how to open her locker for the first time. And then I saw that trust when she came to me at 8 o'clock the night before school started, pleading with me to make another quick trip to Walmart and just trusting mom to help her solve that last minute back to school emergency. I saw the practice of presence in moments like this one, capturing that back to school photo and just seeking to capture that moment when they were all present before they went their separate ways to their new classrooms and their new teachers. 
My children are teaching me how to be a disciple of Christ. We all have a lot to learn from the children in our lives and in our church. I witnessed this just last week in this service during our um, living time of living thanks. <laughs> At 9.30, we had this these little girl that came up here, one of our littlest ones. She knelt to pray right. She was right around here and knelt down. I mean, her head was below the rail. And then it was very quick. She got up, and when she went to return to her seat, she noticed that her little sister was about to join her. She stopped, reached for her sister's hand, turned back to the prayer rail, and knelt down with her, showing her how to pray. It was this brief moment of worship, unstaged, unscripted, unplanned, but one that touched my heart and stuck with me all week long. Jesus said that children are a gift from God. He commanded the disciples to welcome little children in his name and to be like them. In the season of back to school, let us pray for our children, their safety, their happiness, their health, and let us give thanks to God for the ways that we can learn from them. To be pure of heart, to live lives full of joy, to learn new things, to completely trust in the grace of God and to be fully present in our lives. To the children in worship today and those who are listening at home, I want to tell you two things. The first is that you are truly a gift to us from God, truly. And the second is to answer the question in my sermon title. Does Jesus really want us to grow down? Uh, the answer is no. Jesus actually wants us to grow up. And Jesus wants us to grow up to be a lot like you. And that's good news for all of us because the good news is that God's saving grace in our lives is already allowing us to do just that. To learn from our littlest friends how to be disciples of Christ. God's love has made it so. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, we enter into that time of prayer, time of living thanks, where we can bring our hearts of worship before God in a time of prayer. And if you are led to come to the altar and pray, you're welcome to do that. The baskets are here for your connect cards, your offerings as well. May we all be open to the ways that God's love is pouring into us and out of us. Let us pray.
Here at Grace United Methodist Church, all children of God are welcome, and it's our joy today to welcome two folks into membership here at Grace. Before the morning's over, between this service and next, there will be 10 adults that join the church, an adult that's baptized, and a child that's baptized. So it's a good day for Grace, uh, for the Grace Church family and all the children of God here. But today I invite Bob and Mary Kay to come on forward. As they come forward, I'll mention that they are up members of the Heritage Hunt community, and I want to thank folks that live in Heritage Hunt for the ways in which they've been welcoming to their neighbors uh, who have moved into that community and shown lots of love and invited folks to grace. Uh, and for you too, for your ministry here already, as you've already been in ministry with us for a while, we're, we're glad to be able to make it official today. So, I present to you, the body of Christ, Bob and Mary Kay Dunn, who come today reaffirming their faith and for reception into this congregation of the United Methodist Church. Bob and Mary Kay, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, na nations, and races. If so, say, I do. And will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, please say, I will. As members of Christ's universal church, Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, please say, I will. And as members of this congregation, Grace United Methodist Church, will you be faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your services? Please answer, I will. And to the congregation, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and include, and life, and include these persons here now before you in your care? With God's help, we will, we will proclaim, proclaim the good, the good news, news and live according to the example of Christ. Of Christ. We, we will surround these persons with, with a community, community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. It is our joy to welcome our new sister and brother in Christ. I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And now the God of all grace who has called us into eternal glory in Christ establish you and strengthen you that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Did you join me in welcoming the God? Welcome. As I mentioned, uh, we've got more new members and uh, a couple baptisms at the 11 o'clock service, and we are always um, thankful when that happens. If you're interested in membership at Grace, you can get in touch with us uh, about that. We do a class before anybody becomes members, and it's called Exploring Membership. Our next class will be in October, but if you let me know, either on your Connect card or by visiting me on the way out or sending a note, we'll make sure that you get a, a personal invitation to be a part of that class. Uh, again, welcome and thanks be to God. Our worship continues now with a time of prayer. I want to make sure that uh, lift up a couple of our joys and concerns, uh, especially prayer requests from our church prayer list, uh, including prayers for Hal, who is recovering in the hospital, prayers for Tom's best friend's daughter, and then of course uh, we are mindful of numerous places in the world that are in crisis. 
including Afghanistan and all the displaced persons that are looking for new homes and a safe life. We're praying also for the people of Haiti, many of whom uh, we know and love uh, because we've been in ministry with them before. Praying also for those that are uh, in the midst of natural disasters, praying especially today for those on the, in the Gulf Coast that are uh, anticipating Hurricane Ida. I'll now offer prayers on behalf of all of us. There will be a space in the prayer where you can name aloud the prayers that you have with you. And I'll invite your response. So when I say, Lord, in your mercy, you'll be invited to say, hear our prayer. Let's try that. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, we, your children, pray to you on behalf of the church and the world. We pray for all the nations and peoples of the world and their leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the concerns of this local community, especially students and those that work in education. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for those who suffer and those in trouble, those that we've named aloud and those that we carry in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for our own friends, our enemies, and our families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for our own needs, which we bring to you, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the forgiveness of our sin and the sins of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these prayers we ask in the name of Christ, who was willing to take a little child into his own arms, who teaches us as your children to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our closing hymn together. Those here in person in the sanctuary I invite you to stand. And if at your home or watching virtually elsewhere, I invite you to stand as well. Yesu, Yesu is our final hymn, page 432 in the hymn.
truly thankful you were able to join us for worship today here in person and online and we hope that this has been a blessing for you especially if it was your first Sunday at Grace again welcome Bob and Mary Kay we look forward to being in ministry with you we know that you'll want to know about ways you can remain engaged with Grace in the days ahead and so here are a few of those one way is to be in prayer for our Grace Children's Learning Center those kiddos are going to be here tomorrow morning and it's been 17 months since we've had uh class in session so we're excited and ready for them to be here and we ask that you would pray for all the staff teachers and children and parents as well also as a reminder september 12th coming up is our playscape dedication it's also a time that we are going to enjoy some treats and we are going to celebrate miss susan who retired from grace children's learning center as the director um, it's also going to be a time for our children and youth to learn more about the the children's and youth ministries by miss arlene and miss debbie um, and so please join us at noon on the 12th one other way to engage that didn't uh, we don't have a slide for but we want to make sure to mention is that the wesley singers our sixth through twelfth grade youth choir are having an informational meeting today so if that's somebody in your household uh, we invite you to be here at Grace at 4 o'clock today for more information. Also, our Senior Adult Council is offering another luncheon on September 16th. You can RSVP online or by calling the, web, the, the office. Uh, we need you to RSVP by the 9th of September. Finally, uh, many of you have wondered what we can do to help in a number of the situations around the world. Uh, one of them is the aftermath of the earthquake in Haiti. We are collecting medical supplies, and so if you look at the weekly email or our website, you'll be able to find information about what we're collecting. Um, that is, you can bring in your collection during the week, um, and it's gonna happen for a few weeks. So we encourage you to participate in that way if you can. All right, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. It might sound like a familiar song, um, but the good news is we, we are all God's children, and so God's deep love is for all of us. And so I invite you to go forth from this place secure in the knowledge of that great love and ready to share it with a world that is in need of love. Amen. <laughs> 